Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be installing two Zigbee to MQTT coordinators to the same Home Assistant instance, but we'll give you the option to install up to six. With repeaters, I have a single coordinator that can handle up to 256 Zigbee devices. My network should be fine. Well, that's true. But what about if you have a remote outhouse that Zigbee doesn't reach, but you do have a LAN connection to that location? or you want to minimize the latency that repeaters incur and have coordinators for floors of your house and avoid the signal drop through concrete floors. So the simplest way, if you only want two coordinators, is to use Zigbee to MQTT for one and ZHA for the other. But if you only want to use Zigbee to MQTT as your protocol and have the requirement for multiple coordinators, then this video is for you. We'll walk you through the trick of installing multiple Zigbee to MQTT instances and build on a single USB dongle instance and connect up a PoE coordinator as your second instance for that remote location. And then how you can rename the Zigbee to MQTT instances so you can differentiate in Home Assistant by using Hacks Ingress. So let's plug in those adapters and get configuring. Before we dive into adding a second Zigbee to MQTT instance, as I mentioned, the simplest way to get two Zigbee networks is to simply add a coordinator with ZHA. Check out the video in the pop-up above for the Tubes ZB PoE coordinator. In that video, we take you through how to add ZHA and Zigbee to MQTT networks in a single Home Assistant instance. Now I'll assume that you have a Zigbee to MQTT network installed. If not, then follow the 5 minute installation of Zigbee to MQTT video in the pop-up above. So we have a Zigbee to MQTT instance installed and available. So why can't I just add another Zigbee to MQTT add-on that would talk to the mosquito broker that would communicate with the MQTT integration? So let's try and do that now. Press the add-on store in the bottom right hand corner. Now remember that a blue line above the add-on means that it's not available to be installed and is already in use. So we could install the Zigbee to MQTT Edge, which is the beta version, but this might not be stable and might have issues. So the question is, how do we install multiple instances of the same stable non-beta version of Zigbee to MQTT? So we need to use a trick that is actually just an internet quirk, which I'll put a reference as into why this works in the description. We're going to fool Home Assistant into installing a second Zigbee to MQTT add-on and making it unique. The great thing about this is that Home Assistant will handle all the Docker backend perfectly well. Press the three dots in the top right hand corner. Select Repositories. Now you can see the add-on repository for Zigbee to MQTT. However, you can see that the delete is greyed out and not available as this is in use. Copy the URL for the repository. Now we're going to use the same URL, but we're going to change it. But it's still going to go to the same location. Now paste the URL that you've just copied into the add URL field. Now delete the S from HTTPS and press add. You can now see that a second instance of Zigbee to MQTT has been added and that the remove icon is now available as it is not being used. Using a second trick, we can also add a slash or two slashes to the end of the URL for both HTTP and HTTPS. All address the same URL location, but Home Assistant handles these as unique and hence gives us up to six unique Zigbee to MQTT instances. We'll leave this as two for the tutorial. Now, since our first instance is a Sonoff Zigbee USB dongle, let's configure our second Zigbee to MQTT for a Tubes ZB power over Ethernet dongle so you can connect that outhouse. Remember, the process will work equally as well for a second USB dongle if you prefer. But first we need to make two changes for the first instance. Navigate to Settings, search for and select Zigbee to MQTT. Select the Configuration tab on the top line. In the MQTT section, add base underscore topic colon space Zigbee to MQTT 1. The section after base topic can be anything, but it needs to be unique to this instance of Zigbee to MQTT. The channel command is optional, but as we want to minimize interference in what is already a congested radio frequency, best to set it here so that we can tune accordingly later if required. Now scroll down and press save for the section that you have made the changes. Home Assistant will tell you it needs to restart Zigbee to MQTT if you wish to save the changes. Press restart. 
give it a few seconds and then press Zigbee to MQTT in the left hand menu to confirm that everything is working. Now let's configure our second instance. For this we'll be using a Tube ZB EFR Zigbee coordinator. Navigate to settings, add-ons, select the add-on store, search for Zigbee to MQTT. Select your second instance of Zigbee to MQTT that does not have the blue line above it. Press install. Turn on start on boot, watchdog and show in sidebar. Now press configuration. Now you can follow the tubes ZB installation video, but I've populated mine already. Now we have three important differences. Yes, that's three, not a two from the previous installation. The base topic must be different from the one before. So I'll be using Zigbee to MQTT 2. This is my naming convention, but you can use anything you wish as long as it's different from the first instance. Again, I've optionally entered the channel and set this to something different from the first instance to avoid radio interference. Now scroll down and press save for the section. For our third difference, scroll down until you see the network section. Under normal circumstances, you would have left this as 8485 which is the value for the first instance. We need to make this unique. So increment this by one and change it to 8486. If you have further instances of Zigbee to MQTT, then you would need to increment these again and make all of the instances unique. Scroll down and press save for this section. Since we have changed the network port, we need to make the corresponding change to the SOCAT. Scroll up. Next to the label for slave, you will see an 8485 as a listening port. Change this to match the network port below. Now press save for the section. Navigate to the info tab and press start. Give it a few seconds to start. Now press the second instance of Zigbee to MQTT on the left hand menu to confirm that we have both networks working. So now we have two Zigbee to MQTT instances running and we can set up our network accordingly. However, they are both shown as the same name in the left hand menu. So now let's change the label name to make them unique. To do this, we're going to need a hacks integration called Has Ingress. Now, if you don't have hacks installed, then follow the link in the pop-up above. And once installed, come back to this video. Navigate to Hacks. Now press Integrations. Now press the three dots in the top right hand corner and select Custom Repositories. Copy the link for has integration in the description and paste it into the repositories field. Select integrations in the category. Now press add. You'll see that the ingress repository has been added. You can now press the cross in the top right hand corner to come out of this screen. Now press the explore and download repositories in the bottom right hand corner. Search for and select ingress. Now press the blue download button in the bottom right hand corner and confirm with download. Now we need to restart Home Assistant to be able to add the integration. Press Developer Tools, check your configuration, press Restart, Restart Home Assistant and confirm with Restart. Now the Ingress integration cannot be added as a UI integration, but we can use it through code. We'll need to make a change to the configuration.yaml file. If you don't have an editor loaded, then I would suggest using Studio Code Server, link in the pop-up above. Before we make the changes to our configuration file, we need the URL addresses to each of our Zigbee to MQTT instances. Using your mouse, hover the pointer over each of the Zigbee to MQTT instances in the left hand menu. A URL will be displayed. Make a note of each of the instances you have. Now press Studio Code Server in the left hand menu. Now I've created this code already and it will be in the description for you to copy and paste into your configuration.yaml file. Change the label for Zigbee to MQTT 1 and 2 to match your base topic. Change your title to whatever you wish. I've changed the icon to the generic Zigbee icon, but you can select whichever MDI icon you wish. And most importantly, change the URL to match the value you copied in the bottom left hand corner while hovering over the Zigbee to MQTT menu. Now we have one final change before we restart Home Assistant and see our new labels. Navigate to Settings. Add-ons, select your first Zigbee to MQTT instance, untick show in sidebar. Now press the back arrow in the top left hand corner and select your second Zigbee to MQTT instance and untick show in sidebar. Now navigate to developer tools, check your configuration, press the restart, select restart home assistant and confirm with restart. Once Home Assistant comes back, you will now be able to see your new labels and have two fully functional Zigbee 2 MQTT networks. 
So that's two Zigbee networks, one USB and one PoE installed and configured with correct labels for easy identification in under 10 minutes. And if you follow through the other videos, you have Hacks and Studio Code Server installed as a bonus. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, then consider liking the video, subscribing, and joining the channel community. And if I helped you, maybe a super thanks or buy me a coffee for my Ember mug. Link in the pop-up. Until the next one, I hope your sensors in your outhouse appreciate the instant response times.